Going down to Garden City in Long Island, where we purchased a very large estate, mostly with uh, very fine French bronze furniture. There's a magnificent pair of urns, a lot of very, very great stuff. Nice vitrine with contents. In here, we have a uh, beautiful little mechanical bird box, porcelains, some glass. Homier, Doré bronze or tooth table. Seb's urns. A pair of marble uh, parquetry inlaid bouillot tables. Beautiful pair of bronze, probably put together sconces. Here we have a magnificent pair of bronze, I would imagine, Tomir urns. Look at the quality in those. Sitting atop a pair of sort of 20th century marble top tables. Here we have very finely carved gilt wood. What you would call a porter's chair, Steve. <laughs> okay, this is all in the state. Now look at this magnificent marble fireplace. Somehow or another, we're gonna to have to figure out how to get this off the wall without damaging it. Full figure here, you can see it's in one piece, two piece, three, four, five, and six. So we'll have to get it off the wall somehow or another. Look at this magnificent clock up here. Paris. We have a pair of, right alongside, a beautiful pair of Meisen urns. Here we have a nice Louis XV1 giltwood carved love seat. Look at the lovey doveys up there, Stephen. In here in the dining room, we have a well, classical sort of oval table, pedestal table with what looks like 12 chairs. Great to see it in the house, so you know that it's a state fresh when we get to sell it. So all of you buyers out there know this has never seen the market before. We have marble top, huge big marble top server here. Another magnificent bronze clock. This is a very fine uh, French three-piece set. The other pieces out there, it's, I forget the name of them now, but they're signed, uh, they're like piano lamps. We have the pair, it's a garniture set of three. We have the one outside. This mirror is bronze over the back here. All going to be coming with us for the next auction. We have a pair of these beautiful marble top little servers. Marble top with parquetry inlay. And look at the size of these, you can just see them here. These are bronze, Doré bronze patinated figural sconces. Beautiful. Silver tea set. All this is gonna be sold in our next sale, which is on June the 2nd, so it's a sale you don't wanna miss. We've got magnificent art coming out. Look at this, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful Doré bronze figure lamp with the beaded shade. See? We've a parquetry inlaid and leather top. Little lady's uh, kidney-shaped writing desk. Paintings on the wall, Steve. The other two chairs from the uh, little parlor set makes it a nice set. Beautiful condition, the, you know, the upholstery still in original vintage condition. Down here, Steve, we have this absolutely beautiful Sebs porcelain plaque on stand. Look at the big stand front here. We don't want to break it here and start the day off badly, but there's the stand that sits on top of that. Out here, Steve, we have what they call a pedestal clock. Look, beautiful marble, beautiful bronze. The gilding is magnificent on the bronze. Great piece, and if you have a bit of sculpture you can put on here, you can see they have the third piece from the garniture set on top. Nice chandelier, Steve, here. Uh, the hallway mirror console and Perigir, crystal girondelles into the moving along the hallway in the bedroom. Steve, you can see it's a bit like a uh, it's a bit like a time warp. This is an old room. There's not much in here from us, but we'd probably take this mid-century, what I would say is Milo Bowen sort of uh, groovy look. It could be uh, Vladimir Kagan with that V shape. We'd probably take this marble top table and. Note you're probably moving from the, I think you're veering on the 60s, 50s. Now here you have a groovy, look at this for a groovy 60s room. Leather upholstered furniture, these funky lamps. So this is the master bedroom. Quite nice, this is, this is quite different and very nice. I think it's mirrored, it's a headboard. A bit loose, so we're gonna have to be very careful moving this, but beautiful gilted carved and some nice uh, reverse painting on that. Here we have, I would say an Italian, 
could be olive wood, but it could be burl, but I would say beautiful Italian, what they call a bomb front olive wood with a serpentine, nice marble, magnificent Rococo bronze clock here. These are very nice. These are a pair of, although there's no candle hours on this, a pair of bronze sconces, magnificent. Look at that, the beautiful work on them. Here we have these, what look like candlesticks, but in actual fact, I think if you put them like that, turn this around, put it like that, you have a magnificent pair of aperns. Beautiful cut crystal aperns, as opposed to the way they were. You can always turn it back to candlesticks. Here we have a barrel top and inlaid, probably Italian, but I would say from the 70s, little barrel top desk. We have a nice pair of neoclassical style benches, the decorators will love them. A pair of bomb, parquetry, and inlaid bomb little marble top commodes here. These are a beautiful pair of Sevs porcelain urns. And this, this is particularly nice, although they're not necessary, it's big and not necessarily in vogue, but what a magnificent Louis Philippe style armoire here with the bronze work and the nice swag handles and the fluted and carved pilasters. You know, raised on beautiful feet. And a run, look at this, here's a good old 50s. Normally tough to sell, but just has great lines, nice sizes, actually a very useful chest of drawers. So that'll do quite well, even though it's not in the uh, groovy and valuable stuff like the other stuff. Anyway, let's whip you downstairs to the basement quickly, Steve, just so you get an idea. Down here we got some great Brazilian stuff, especially for Nan. Brings them back memories of home. And it was a signed, nice 70s Brazilian furniture. Quite desirable, looks like it's in good shape to just do with the dusting. So now we're gonna leave you to it and you can do what you want, but we're gonna have to get this stuff out of here. Just one of our great items out of a Westbury, Long Island estate is this 40 inch pair of male and female 19th century French bronze gilt and patinated sconces of just the top quality. And from a house right down the street here, really a museum quality, mid-century vase signed Claude Conover. It's titled Hopchi or Hopki. Does belong in a museum. An American bronze of a puppy, signed and dated also by the Gorham Foundry. Signed and dated Helen Morton, 1916, Gorham. Original patina. A little Bakelite or cattle in radio, two color. Don't know if it's Feta or who the maker is, but I haven't found this example on the market yet out of a Mount Vernon house. And from a Larchmont house, a really beautiful antique Chinese two panel porcelain plaque in an antique carved frame. And from a White Plains house, I think an 18th century Chinese porcelain teapot, maybe made for the Islamic market. It's been mounted in this kind of fun way as was the fashion in the 50s or 60s as a lamp, but I think the focus should be this teapot. And here, Steve, one of two turn 1880s, 1890s carved desks, certainly by the Horner Company. Here's a slant front desk. And if I can move around the room to the double-sided partner's desk with Griffins, carved Griffins, North Wind or Lion Head Pulls, original finish, mahogany. And one of the best and most important items out of our Westbury, Long Island, old Westbury, Long Island house is this surtout de table, which can be firmly attributed to Tomier. It's been converted to a coffee table some part of the early 20th century, but an antique gilt bronze surtout de table of the finest quality available. And I'll end my segment outdoors. One of many mid-century outdoor sculptures from a Bedford, New York estate, including this stone granite installation by a Dutch artist named Mutal, M-U-T-A-L. And here's just a couple of others. We hope to see you at what possibly could be one of our best auctions ever, and I'll turn it over to Neelia. I'm so excited to show you the art we have coming up for June 3rd. 
I'm gonna start here with this amazing painting we just got in yesterday. Very exciting for us. This is a Richard Ults German surrealist work on canvas and oil done in 1935. This piece is called Archaic Fragment. It was actually exhibited in 1942 at the, Sur the Surrealist Show in New York called the First Surrealist Papers. Now this was a show organized by many of the French Surrealist artists including uh, Andre Breton who had been displaced during World War II. This piece was alongside works by Marcel Duchamp, Ernst Jatirico, all the heavy hitters of the time in, in Surrealism. It's such a complex painting. There's so much happening here, so we're gonna take a few minutes to go through it step by step. Um, I would like to start up here. I want you to see just this beautiful placid landscape that's up at the top. You can look in even just one corner and it's a, a work in itself. Wonderful landscape. This was painted actually in Paris in 1935. The artist was in Paris um, from 1933 to 1936. And then you contrast that landscape with these sensual, organic, biomorphic, detailed forms throughout this piece. You've got figure-like representations here, almost kind of morbid, going into fleshy tones. If you just Take a look at the brushwork and the detail in here is so fine. Incredible painting from an incredible period of time. Important work of art for the artist, possibly a turning point in his surrealist career. Although he never fully identified with the surreal surrealist artist, you can't deny that this is 100% a surrealist painting. So we're just so excited to have this coming up. The estimate on this is 60 to 80,000. This work has been unseen for the last 15 or 20 years. It's been in a home in Somers, New York, and a private collection was gifted to the consigner from a German collector. Uh, he you know, finally decided it was, it was time to move and sell the piece. But as you can see, it's in as is condition. There's some tears and rips up here, and a little bit of flaking, sorry, down, down here around the signature, a little bit of flaking down here. Overall, the work is in very good, pretty much untouched condition, exactly as you'd want a piece like this to be done. We'll let the, the next owner and lover of this painting to, to restore it and care for it. This sweet oil on canvas here is by Elmer McRae. Now, some of you may know him in the area. He is a local Connecticut Cost Cobb artist. He was part of the Cost Cobb Art Colony up in Greenwich. Beautiful painting of a little girl, and this actually came out of a home in Greenwich. Also, uh, early 20th century work. Nice Impressionist style, part of the, the later American Impressionist group of artists. This work we have estimated at $8,000 to $12,000. Here we have an etching and aquatint by Pablo Picasso. We've got a beautiful pencil signature down here. This actually came out of the same estate as the Elmer McRae. Wonderful condition, nice heavy impression, dark colors. You can see all the tonalities and details uh, within the work. You've got the man watching the, the nude sleeping woman. We have removed this from the frame. It's got a full sheet. There is a Villard uh, watermark. This is part of the Villard suite. There is a little bit of toning and matte burn as you would expect from a piece that's been hanging on a collector's wall. I was exposed to a little bit of sunlight so there's some time staining, but other than that it's in wonderful condition. This one's going into the sale estimated at 20 to 25,000. In addition to this Picasso etching, we have a Picasso lithograph. We have a signed publication of Cajer de Art by Picasso, as well as a Picasso ceramic mug. So there are a lot of great Picasso pieces in this sale. We know Picasso worked in Paris and Richard Oltz was working in Paris when he created Archaic Fragment. Now we're gonna take you to an actual Parisian painting. This is by Bernard Buffet. Very well known, very prolific French artist. Beautiful, heavy impasto still life, a bouquet with flowers. This is actually out of a home in New Rochelle. Nice local home, dated 1965. This will be accompanied by the original Wally Finley Gallery uh, receipt from 1967, so full provenance on it, wonderful painting, beautiful energy coming out of the leaves, and that heavy thick paint that he used. Nice brushwork, nice palette knife. Out of the same home as the Bernard Buffet, we have this beautiful Nicola Simbari. 
The colors in this are just right for spring and summer coming up. Beautiful teals, pinks, purples, greens. Fantastic use of a palette knife. Sambari painted almost exclusively with a palette knife, as you can see here, but certainly was expert at it. Uh, the rendering of the figure, even with these thick strokes, is pretty impeccable. The lighthouse in the distance. Wonderful use of, of color and line and gesture. This was painted, this is the beach in Ostia. This was painted um, while he was working in Rome. He had a studio in Rome really from 1950s to about 1960s, so this was certainly painted within that period. This also is accompanied by a Wally Finley brochure, an original receipt from the 1960s. The last piece I'm gonna show you today is this bronze that came in actually just on Wednesday in our walk-in Wednesday appraisal day. Came in from a Rye home. This is by Bernard Redder kind of an Israeli-American artist, the organ player, done in 1960. The same work was exhibited in the Whitney in 1961. Great mid-century looking. Uh, you can just see the texture and the organic, almost flower-like forms that come from the organ. This is from an edition, uh, one of three. We're very excited to have this, estimated at $2,000 to $3,000 great big size. Although there are limited records for the artist, I think this is one of the best piece that, the pieces I've seen uh, that will be coming to market. Now Whitney will take over and show you a little taste of the jewelry coming up on June 3rd. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia. And I'll be going through the fantastic selection of jewelry and silver that we have for our upcoming June 3rd sale. Starting with these red colored glass cockatoo or bird form decanters, we have these nice sterling heads and on the inside here if you can see they're stamped sterling made in Spain and also have a stamp of Cartier. Moving on to some of our jewelry selection for this sale from a nice Bronxville estate the same as the Bernard Buffet painting we have this 14 karat yellow gold Italian necklace very beautiful piece here and a, a heavy piece weighing in at about 45 penny weights and from a Greenwich estate we have this a lot of two rings, which are both flip rings. If you see here, an emerald cut peridot flanked by diamonds, flips over to a diamond ring. Together with this deco style 14 karat gold ring, diamonds and also rubies on one side, and it may take me a moment, but we have sapphires on the other. A really quite unique, interesting piece we have. From the same Greenwich estate, we have these two rings, pearls and rubies, along with this purple blue stone which I believe to be a tanzanite both in this is an 18 karat gold and this is in 14 karat gold and from the same Greenwich estate these two rings here a nice buckle form ruby and diamond ring along with this ribbon or bow form ring from the same Bronxville estate as our 14 karat yellow gold Italian necklace are these four deco style little rings these two bands sapphires diamonds and emeralds are one lot along with these two which are also diamonds, sapphires, and emeralds. From this same Bronxville estate, we have these three pair of earrings, which are being sold individually and are by the Manhattan artist and designer, Barry Keiselstein Cord. And the very interesting pieces that we have in the sale are numerous lots of Russian silver. We have this really great Russian silver enamel box. And on the interior of this box, we do have in Cyrillic a mark here that does signify that this piece is Russian silver. Another Russian silver box in this sale is a really beautiful enamel box here. You see the fish design and floral and nice rounded edges with a little green cabochon closure. And a nice gilded interior. It is a cigarette case. Marked in a very small little spot here. I'm not sure if you can see that. It does signify that it is Russian and we will touch more on this in our longer preview video. One of the most interesting lots in this sale is this four piece dessert set by Klebnikov, a Russian maker. It's just extraordinarily beautiful. It comes in colors of red, yellow, green, and blue with a nice guillotte centers. If you can see here, the nice work on the interior. And if you look, if you put these up to the light, each of these have a different design to the rim of these pieces. Very beautiful floral design to these. 
And each of these sets does include a cup, plate, and spoon. And all are marked Klebnikov. These came in from a Fairfield, Connecticut estate and were quite the surprise when we went in there on a Saturday morning. And we're happy to have them in the sale and think they will do quite well. And we'll see you at our sale on June 3rd. Thank you. In Keen's absence, we just wanted to also mention that we have quite a, a variety of uh, mid-century furniture and furnishings, including Nakashima, Parzinger, Knoll, and other good quality mid-century makers. And keep your eyes open for our next more comprehensive video, which should be done in a week or 10 days, and we'll give you a good overview of all the quality items that we'll have in our upcoming June sale. Hope to see you then.